Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we are uh, looking at the velocity triangle of the axial flow turbine and what we have already looked at the leading edge and trailing edge and the velocity component and this is where we stopped uh, where we get the relationship between the angles alpha, beta uh, at different stages. So this is what we obtained. Now we use the angular momentum ok. So, using that what we can write is u delta v theta which is u v theta 2 plus v theta 3. So, one can write u v z tan alpha 2 plus tan alpha 3 equals to u v z tan beta 2 plus tan beta 3. All this one can write from these velocity triangles that we have already uh, drawn or uh, discussed. So, this W t is also C p delta 2 T s and this C p delta 2 T s is u v z tan beta 2 for let us say tan beta 3, then we get delta 2 O s u v z by C p tan beta 2 plus tan beta 3. So, this is nothing but the T O s is stagnation temperature drop in stage. So, this is the difference in stagnation temperature drop and also we have like P naught 1 by P naught 3 also can be correlated with uh, this uh, delta T s like if you use that then we can write this delta T o s is eta T t T naught 1 1 minus P naught 3 by P naught 1 whole to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma this. So, eta T t is total to total stage efficiency. So, which is essentially one can think about isentropic stage efficiency based on stagnation temperature. So, one can define like eta T t is T naught 1 minus T naught 3. So, uh, by T naught 1 minus. So, we will look at the curve and then probably it would be bit easier. Uh, so, if we draw the let us say T s diagram. So, that is starting point of somewhere 1. So, now that is go there, this is P naught 1, this is P 1 and then from here it comes to here. So, that is P 2, from there it comes to here 
which is 3, this is P 3 and in between there would be P naught 3. Okay. So, this is 0 1, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 0 3. So, this is V 3 square by 2 C P. Now, this is this is 2 s and this guy is 3 s, this is 0 3 s, then this is 0 3 s s, this is 3 s s. Now, this S S and this these are delta H R. So in between this this is delta H N. So this is an expansion process, this is essentially the expansion in turbine. So, that is how it looks. Now, this is how one can define T naught S would be eta T T, T naught 1, 1 minus T naught 3 S by T naught 1. So, this is T naught 1, 1 minus T naught 3 by P naught 1 gamma minus on this. So, once you draw the T s diagram, then it is bit easy. So, there is another efficiency what uh, one can uh, it is eta T s which is total to static stage efficiency which is T naught 1 minus T naught 3 divided by T naught 1 minus T 3 s. So, everything now you can correlate from this T s diagram what you get. Okay. Now, we talk about some of the important uh, dimensionless parameter number 1 which we have also looked at. So, you can see the uh, clear similarity while talking about the axial flow compression like uh, blade loading coefficient. So, this already we have seen it or one can say it is a representation of temperature drop coefficient. So, which is you know, this psi or capital psi which is C p delta T naught s by half u square 2 C p delta T naught s by u square 2 v z by u tan beta 2 plus tan beta 3. Now, second again degree of reaction which is defined like enthalpy change in rotor overall change in enthalpy. So, this will be T 2 minus T 3 by T 1 minus T 3. Since we have V z 2 equals to V z 3 equals to V z and V 3 equals to V 1, we can write C p T 1 minus T 3 equals to C p T naught 1 minus T naught 3 which is u v z tan beta 2 plus tan beta 3. 
So, relative to rotor blades the flow does not does no work. Now, if I write steady state steady flow energy equation that yields C p T naught 2 at leading edge is C p T naught 3 at trailing edge. So, which is nothing but C p T 2 plus half W 2 square C p T 3 plus half W 3 square. So, now if you rearrange that. So, what we get C p T 2 minus T 3 half W 3 square minus W 2 square. So, which is half V z square sec square beta 3 minus. So, this is nothing but the trigonometry. So, I can write like that C p T 2 minus T 3 would be half V z square tan square beta 3 beta 2. Now, we have this definition of degrees of reaction. So, half V z square tan square beta 3 minus tan square beta 2 u v z tan beta 3. So, that will get me v z by 2 u tan beta 3 minus tan beta 2. Okay. And the third non dimensional number is the flow coefficient, which is called phi nothing but B z by u. Since, we had psi is 2 phi tan beta 2 plus tan beta 3. So, we can have degrees of reaction is phi by 2 tan beta 3 minus tan beta 2. Since, we can write tan beta 3 equals to 1 by 2 phi psi by 2 plus 2 and tan beta 2 equals to 1 by 2 phi psi by 2 minus 2 this. So, this gives me tan alpha 3 equals to tan beta 3 minus 1 by phi and tan alpha 2 equals to tan beta 2 minus 1 by phi. So, my V z is mass flow rate by rho 1 a 1 which will be m dot r t 1 by p 1 a 1. Now, typical experience show that 50 percent reactions machine are most efficient that means, degree of reaction of 0.5 is more efficient. So, in this case the expansion is equally divided between the stator and the rotor. Now, if we consider rho equal to or 0.5 at the mean radius which is phi by 2 tan beta 3 minus tan beta 2 we get 1 by phi equals to tan beta 3 minus tan beta 2. So, that we have already seen that that this is going to be the situation. Now, if you write u by v z equals to tan alpha 2 minus tan beta 2 equals to tan beta 3 minus tan alpha 3. So, 1 by phi equals to tan alpha 2 minus tan beta 2 beta 3 minus tan alpha 3. Since, beta 3 equals to alpha 2 and beta 2 equals to alpha 3. 
so the velocity diagram would be symmetrical so if we draw that so this is u so w2 b2 alpha 2 beta 2 w3 v3 alpha 3 beta 3 so which gives w theta 2 is v theta 3 and w theta 3 is v theta 2 so my change in this v theta 3 is theta through which is delta w theta now further if we consider repeating stages then uh, we have v1 equals to v3 and alpha 1 equals to alpha 3 then we get alpha 1 equals to beta 2 equals to alpha 3 so the stator and rotor blade have same inlet and outlet angles now again uh, looking back since tan beta 3 is 1 by 2 phi i by 2 plus 2 this now for this equals to 0 0.5 and beta 2 equals to alpha 2 we get this equals to 4 phi tan beta 3 minus 2 which is 4 phi tan alpha 2 minus 2 also we get tan beta 2 equals to 1 by 2 phi minus to this so that gives us back equals to 4 phi tan beta 2 plus 2 tan alpha 3 plus 2 okay so these are the different uh, relationship that you can get now we we'll look at the how do we estimate the uh, stage efficiency? So, that we will try to estimate. Uh, so, typically this is obtained by wind tunnel test of cascade of blades, where we measure the temperature and pressure across the blades and then with the losses and everything else we get the eta s. So, this test show that design having low low psi and low phi is the best stage efficiency where psi is 2 cp s by u square which is 2 vz by u tan beta 2 plus tan beta 3 and phi is v z by u. Now, what happens? Low phi and psi means low v z which means low v less frictional losses, but low psi is low delta T s needs more stages. So, one hand we have low frictional losses and the other hand because of this low psi we need more stages. Now, also low phi low psi uh, low phi means low vz which means higher 
degrees of reaction for a given m dot which means bulkier and heavier engine okay so optimum values of an aircraft engine so this means uh, larger turbine annulus area so typical value of this goes between 3 to 5 while phi goes uh, between 0.8 to 1. So, just to keep the frontal area of the aircraft engine and the weight on the lower side. Now, for industrial gas turbine SPL is vital, so low phi low psi is um, desired. And last stage a low axial velocity, a small swell angle alpha 3 are desirable to keep down the losses in the exhaust diffuser. Okay. Now, we can actually estimate the frictional losses from each stage. Now, let us look at this uh, previous diagram again in details T S diagram. of a stage at mean radius. Okay. So, we have this. So, that is So, this is P not 1, P not 2, okay. so this is P 1, so this is 0 2, this is 1, then this P 2, then it goes to so this goes to three, so P three. Okay. So, this is 2, this is 3, then we have P not 3 and we get here from 3 we get 2 and then So, this is 0 3, so this is uh, okay. so this is P 0 3 relative this is P 0 to relative. Okay. And then this is 2 prime, 3 prime, 3 double prime. So, this one is V 1 square by 2 C P.
this is b2 square by 2 cp so that is w is by cp so here t not 1 equals to t not 2 then uh, so this is b3 square by 2 cp so this is w3 square by 2 cp this one w2 square by 2 cp so these are the complete diagram of that so the loss coefficient lost coefficient for the nozzle is the stator blades may be defined as n 2 C p t 2 minus t 2 prime by b 2 square or y n p not 1 minus p not 2 p not 2 minus p 2. So, here we have this psi n and y n these are proportion of living energy degraded by friction which can be measured y n is can be measured relatively easily in cascade test this is more easily used in design and y n and both lambda n are not very different. So, one can show that doing some now similarly lambda r is t 3 minus t 3 double prime by w 3 square by 2 C p. So, which is uh, rotor blade loss which is lambda r. So, is defined as a proportion of the layering kinetic energy relative to the or living kinetic energy relative to the rho. So, it can be related to the cascade test result. So, one can note here that no work is done by the gas relative to the blades. So, T not 2 relative should be T not 3 relative and lambda r is P not 2 relative minus P not 3 relative divided by P not 3 relative minus P 3. So, essentially the lost coefficient in terms of pressure drop. So, as I said one can show that lambda sort of would be equivalent to y and uh, this one can 
easily show with some argument also by doing some analytical analysis through this uh, T S diagram that we have drawn here. So, this is a globe um, I mean picture for a particular stage you get and how the absolute velocity, relative velocity and all these corresponding stages they are connected. So, now um, this uh, how we can show this lambda and y this could be an another important argument, but uh, we can uh, look at that thing in the uh, next lecture. So, we will stop it here and continue the discussion of the correlation in the next lecture.